my 3D printing time lapses just don't look that great. But today we're changing that. One of my big inspirations when it comes to videos like this is Scott Yu Young. I hope I'm not butchering that last name. But he makes really amazing 3D printing time lapses. I mean, just look at them. And I want mine to look just as good. But there's a couple things holding me back. Looking at Scott's videos, there's a couple of things he does really, really well. The first one is taking a photo with every layer the printer does. Like that, the prints just grow magically. A lot of other people already do this, but I don't have the setup to do that yet. So that's something I'm gonna build today. And then there's some other stuff that Scott's doing that's mostly camera and video related. But as a freelance filmmaker myself, I think that stuff should be doable for me. So first stick with me as I get my layer by layer time lapses going, and then I'll tell you all of the video secrets. So of course doing these kind of magic time lapses with like a built-in webcam or something is easy, but I wanna do it with a DSLR for best image quality. And since it's not that easy to trigger a DSLR from a 3D printer, we have to custom build something for ourselves. And since Creality just sent me their new K1C, we're gonna do it with this printer, but something similar should work with most printers, if not all of them. Please note that I'm not an FC Bayern Munich supporter. This is just the one that Creality sent me, probably because I'm German, but let's not talk about it. My plan to trigger the camera with the 3D printer is hopefully really simple. First, we have this wireless shutter remote um, that's just easy and for any camera. And then I have these tiny little switches. Then I'm gonna solder the switch into the remote and then just put this little tiny switch inside of the printer so the printer with the print head can actually touch it. That's something that we're gonna do in G-code afterwards. But the hardware side is definitely what I'm more worried about. So now we're at the part of the video where I realize that I don't know what I'm doing. I have now disassembled the remote control and I also have my little trigger button thingy here and now I have to solder this into that and I really have no clue. But hopefully with some help from the internet I'm gonna figure it out so I'm gonna do some research now. So I got a little bit of an idea now. I'm gonna get a multimeter and then measure out this thing to know how it switches and then also do the same with my switch and then I can desolder this button and solder the other one onto that and then hopefully that's gonna work. So I'm gonna order some stuff now and then I'll be right back with you. So here I'm just checking which pins to connect. So after some trial and error I just found out which pins to connect on the camera remote and now I have to solder in my switch. So the first part here is done, and I know that my soldering skills are horrible, but just bear with me. Okay, now, moment of truth. Will pressing this button here also activate the camera remote? It's actually working, and now I just need to repackage that and also 3D print a little enclosure for the button, and yeah, then just make sure that it's all like fairly tidied up and none of the cables end up ripping off my not great soldiers, but that's just details. The big step I think has done has been done here. Sadly, I just learned something. This here is a two-stage button, so you can press it halfway for autofocus on the camera and then all the way for the shutter button. This is only a one-stage one and I soldered it to the autofocus, so it can autofocus the camera, but it can't actually trigger the shutter. So I need to re-solder this to the other button. <laughs> So after a little more trial and error, here we go. <laughs> that sounds pretty good. And with that, we're done with the remote trigger part. So now I just gotta make a case for the actual button and then put that into the printer. V1 of the casing for my button still has a little bit of an issue. The hole diameter is not big enough, so it actually like doesn't go through and the button can't be pressed anymore, but that should be an easy fix. And now I just gotta find out a situation how to actually give it a floor so I can glue it up. But other than that, I think we're already looking pretty good. 
So now I'm just gonna make some tweaks and fixes and then print the next version. I'm now ready to print the next version. So now I'm just grabbing the new parts from the printer and here we go. Let's see how this goes. The new version of the case is up and running. I made a bigger hole, which now finally works. And then I just kind of friction fitted this bottom part because I was too lazy to engineer anything different. Uh, yeah, so actually this one, I'm just gonna glue into the printer and then we can test and start the G-code script. I just checked the printer and when it's homing, it'll go to this side. So we'll actually just double-sided tape, stick this to the other side and then I can program from there. I just fired up mainsail because it lets you know what the actual absolute position of the printer is. And with this, I can slowly move it over manually and then see at what absolute point it presses the button and then I can put that G-code in to actually trigger it in the future. It's good I tried this with a test button because I pushed a little too hard and the whole button just came apart into pieces. So I've now figured out that at an X value of three, this button triggers and I can put that into my G-code. I'm gonna start the first print and see if it actually does the time-lapse. Okay, the first attempt failed horribly. First of all, during the priming process, the printer actually just crushed through my button, so that's broken and I have to resolder a new one. Secondly, it never actually tried to push the button afterwards, so something with the script isn't right. And then also the final printed product is horrible. It's just a full piece of garbage, so we'll have to figure something out here too. So there were some small details to be fixed. I had to change the start G-code inside the printer so it doesn't actually go all the way to the side and crush my button. And also then I tried a new G-code for the time-lapse. We'll see how that goes. Okay, I'm having problems with this again, so I really have to get in the weeds and see why it's not working. After some more trial and error, I've decided to get different kinds of switches that work better for my new plan and situation. So I'm waiting for those to arrive tomorrow. All right, it's the next day and I have these switches now. Originally, I did not like these because I thought they were too big, but with the placement that I'm doing now, they're way better. Another good thing is that they have a lot more give so they won't break. So the next thing to do is solder this to the remote trigger for the camera. And after some really bad soldering, this now triggers this. So now I just put some double-sided tape on the trigger and put it in here. And then as you can see, if I move this over, it should just flash and now the camera will be triggered. So while it was definitely annoying to step back and scrap everything I did with the other button, this was definitely the right way and the easiest way. I can only recommend this. Just a little bit of soldering and double-sided tape. You could make it fancier, but honestly, this does everything I need. So now let's do the first time-lapse with this new setup. The first thing I printed was a standard Gridfinity bin. One funny thing I want to mention is I'm actually using Bamboo Studio for this because it has really good time-lapse support with a prime tower and everything, and this really helps the quality. So yeah, but it works easily with my Creality K1C, and I love that. That worked out pretty well, but you can see some imperfections because of the time-lapse feature. I just want to take a quick second and thank Creality for sending me this K1C. It's honestly an amazing printer. During all my use, this printer has been rock solid for me. It's really fast. I love the ability to print carbon fuse because of the hardened steel nozzle. And also the enclosure is super nice because it's warmer and you have less issues with like prints coming off the bed or just like warping up. So if you're in the market for a new printer, then definitely take a look at the K1C. It's also available in black. So if you're not a Bayern Munich fan, then probably go with black or I think it just looks better in general. After yesterday, the DSLR time-lapse thing finally worked out. We're now gonna work on improving our time-lapses visually. Because it's one thing to just make them work and it's another to make them look. One thing that was definitely very noticeable with my old time-lapses were shifts in the light. 
So this usually happens if you're shooting with daylight, like this big window thing behind me, and there comes a cloud or more sun, and then it will always fluctuate. And it just doesn't look great. So the easy way to fix that is to darken your room by using your blinds or whatever you have to just block out all of the natural light. Once that's done, you want to bring in artificial light. So I'm using this video light right here, but you can also just do overhead lighting in your room. It won't look as nice, but it still works. With all of that in place, we should now have a very smooth, very good looking time lapse. So now we have a good baseline, but still nothing special. And all of these tips are gonna add that little bit of spice. I just want to quickly mention that these are more like optional tips. So you kind of mix and match. You don't do everything of these all the time, but all of them can definitely enhance your time lapse. The first thing I really recommend is giving the time lapse some movement. You can either just use your editing software to just zoom in or go from left to right, which already makes a great difference. If you want to go a little further, you should definitely consider a motorized slider like this, which can just do the movement over time so you can have real movement in your time lapse, which looks way better. Another really cool thing you might consider is blending time lapses with real motion. This gives a really cool effect. One thing you should note though, this really doesn't go well together with camera movement through a slider or something because it's really hard to get it right. So just keep your camera stationary. But then you just shoot your time lapse like normal, keep everything as it is, then switch to video mode in your camera and just take it out. Now you gotta do some masking and it's gonna look perfect. And then the last really cool thing is using sound effects and that actually gives the time lapse a whole different dimension. One is just using stock sound effects, so like wind noises, whooshes, and anything that would really make sense with the printer. And I feel like wind and whooshes make a lot of sense if you show the print head moving, because that's kind of a sound that you would expect to hear because it's something that's moving fast. And the other thing is something we saw in Scott's video where the 3D print just grows magically. And he actually did those sound effects himself. And there you go. It's really easy and you can just get creative with it. So you can use all kinds of different sound effects. It's honestly not rocket science. You might have to try out this and this and get a feel for it. But I think sound design really lets you feel your time lapses and experience them in a whole different way. And that makes such a difference. So in the end, I really hope you enjoyed this journey with me. And now you're either super motivated or know how to make better 3D printing time lapses and make them look beautiful. So if you already loved this video, you should check out this video. I taught my printer how to do automatic 3D printing, so it does everything, starting a new print, pushing it off in the end, and it keeps printing. It's honestly super interesting, so check it out. Thanks for watching and bye.